is Jalela Starr and welcome to uh, Jalela's Weekly Messages. Today I'm going to start a series on Starseeds, Walk-Ins, and Lightworkers and in particular um, in regards to training. Many of you are starting to wake up. Many of you have been on your path a long time. Many of you are just beginning and there's numerous questions that people ask. I get them every week as I do my uh, general counseling sessions. Where am I from? What is my purpose? How do I fulfill this? Why was this so hard? I thought it was going to be easy. Um, lots of confusion. So I thought that this series would help to dispel some of that confu uh, confusion and bring some more clarity and hopefully peace of mind to those of you who are here to do a mission to help humanity, especially in these last three years leading to 2012. So. Today the uh, topic is we're going to cover a definition of a light worker, a star seed, and walk in because there's uh, once again a lot of confusion around that. Beginning with light workers, as I understand it, anyone on the path, anyone who feels that they are here to help humanity is a light worker. They don't necessarily have to be a star seed and they certainly don't have to be a walk in. There's someone who is waking up to the fact that there's more to reality than what they've been taught and are beginning to search. They usually start with the spiritual path and learn about the basics of spirituality, you know, rocks, crystals, angels, tarot, that kind of thing. And then if they choose, they can move on to the ascension path, which is now they realize that there's more to, to life than just being spiritual, that we are actually going somewhere. And that's when they begin to look at the uh, fifth dimensional perspective of uh, a, a federation of worlds, um, you know, ET contact, that kind, of, that kind of thing. Okay, so that's a light worker. Anybody can be a light worker who is awakened and beginning their spiritual studies. Now, what is a star seed? The star seed is a little bit different. A star seed is somebody who is star seeded. In other words, they have one or more parents that um, are off world. Now that's kind of confusing for a lot of people, so let me explain it to you. Say for example, you are a starseed with a starseed father. What that means is that you will have two fathers. You will have your earth father and you will have your off-world star father. How does that occur? Well, your mother, your biological mother, is taken in astral form to another place, usually during the sleep state and she is um, impregnated by a being from another planet. This could be uh, actually physical or it could be in vitro. More likely than not, it is in vitro. Once she is impregnated, she is sent back to Earth where she conceives the child. On the other hand, if you have a star seed mother, then your earth father is your biological father. Your earth, your 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 mother is your surrogate mother, and your father's and, and mother will both be taken at different times. Your father's DNA will be extracted, mingled with the um, DNA of a female, off-world female, and then that egg. Well, actually, her egg will be impregnated into your Earth Mother's womb. Sometimes it isn't that way. Sometimes just some of her DNA is put into the your Earth Mother's egg, and then re then placed back into your Earth Mother's womb, where she is. Uh, is she then conceives, and you, you are born. In either case, in either one of these cases, um, you if you're a star seed and you have a starseed father, you will look more like your surrogate father. You're going to look more like the surrogate than the, than the biological parent, simply because that enables them to psychologically own you as their own, because they're the ones who are going to have to raise you. But that's not always the case. Remember, these are generalities. It's not always this way, but it usually is. Um, there's also the possibility that you could be starseeded on both sides. And in that case, you're going to look like both of your parents, and you're going to have um, challenges uh, with both parents, which is the next thing. Usually, uh, one indication of being a starseed um, 
having one surrogate is that you will look like the surrogate and you will have the most difficult relationship with the surrogate and an easier relationship with the actual uh, genet uh, birth parent, I mean the uh, biological parent. Um, so that's what uh, a star seed is. They are from another world, another timeline. And uh, they came here on a mission, which we'll talk about in the following video. The final one is the walk-in. Walk-ins are very interesting. There's different types of walk-ins. Well, they call there's the, that what we call a stasis walk-in, a full uh, exchange walk-in, a soul braid walk-in. Um, a full exchange is a type that um, Ruth Montgomery talked about in her book *Strangers Among Us*. Uh, it is where one soul completely exchanges places with another soul and takes over that body. To complete that in and uses it to complete whatever they need to come here to do and I usually come here to do something to assist this planet as well as their own which is we'll talk about the missions in the following uh, video in this series the um, the stasis walk-in is very interesting the stasis walk-in is somebody who is alive on another planet they're able to go into stasis for extended, extended periods of time and project their consciousness into another world and into another form and actually uh, it's not quite a braid because it's more of a consciousness uh, commingling with the other one uh, usually the original soul will have vacated and so the consciousness of the person in stasis basically animates the body at that point it's kind of a strange thing um, but it's more common than we realize. It's much like the, you know, in the movie The Matrix when Neo could sit and strap himself in the chair and project his consciousness into the Matrix and then come back and carry on his life on the ship. Well, I just love the fact that that movie's out there because it is a really clear picture of a stasis walk-in, except that in stasis you usually are laying down in your sleep for long periods of time. Now, um, the third type of walk-in is called a soul braid. And this is where one soul will braid with the host soul in the body. So in other words, you could be soul braiding with another soul, and it could be a higher aspect of you. You're still in your body, but you're aware that there's another being in there because you're making more, you're making better choices than you would have made normally, and you're growing through the experience. Even And of course, there's a lot of challenges because that soul is going to um, move you to, to grow spiritually and work through your, your issues, work through your fears. So those are the three types of walk-ins, the stasis walk-in, the full exchange walk-in, and then the soul braid walk-in. Um, the, the stasis and the soul braid can both be there for any number of years, from a few years to 20, 30, 40 years. It just depends on what they came here to do. And with the soul to exchange, there's also the option for a soul to return to its body, the host soul. They don't necessarily go and stay. It isn't one way. They can always come back if that's what the plan calls for. I learned that um, toward the end of my mission, which was quite interesting. But the, who, who, the soul that comes back is always going to be different because they've been gone. They've experienced things other places. and. Um, they're going to bring those experiences back with them. So we're never quite the same. If we go back along a timeline, we're always a little bit different. So anyway, I thought that would help you in understanding the difference, the terminology between the starseed walk-in and the light worker. And um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be talking about next week, but I'm, I think it's going to, oh yeah, I know what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, the, the, a lot of the challenges that the starseeds and the walk-ins and the light workers face is they begin waking up. That's pretty cool. I think you'll get a lot of clarity there. And some peace of mind, knowing that you're not the only one. All right, take care. Bye-bye.